Hello and welcome to Blogging for Profits, Mastering the Rise in Network Marketing. My name is Angela Brooks and I am your speaker for today. And I wanted to talk to you about things that scare us. For some reason, uh, people get into business, but yet they are afraid. And uh, what is it you're afraid of? A lot of times people get into business and then they find out they have to talk to other human beings and they freak out. And they're like, um, I can't do this. You can, it's just learning something new. Um, for example, this podcast, I started podcasting January, 2019. Today is the 60th podcast. And um, when I got started, I had no idea what I wanted to do, how I wanted to use a podcast. Um, did I want to do interview style? Did I want it to just be me rambling about whatever I wanted to? Did I want to have a focus? What did I want to do? So since I've been uh, podcasting, that's 2.5 podcast per month, which is not exceptional, but it is, uh, it's a start. And as I have progressed through podcasting, I've taught myself straight up from the ground up, had a lot of things to learn because I just didn't know. Uh, but what I did find out is that I enjoy it. And I'm going to be using it more than uh, I have been in the past. And so I thought I would also add my podcast, not all of them, but most of them to my Facebook group, Master the Rise. If you are on the podcast and you're listening to this and you would like to be in that Facebook group, it is on uh, Facebook under Master the Rise. You can't find it. Holler at me on Facebook and I'll get you in. Um, I also have it attached in my newsletter on AngelaBrook.com. So if you are not on the newsletter, make sure you subscribe to this podcast, get on the newsletter so you can find all the other updates and things that I'm doing as well. Um, and some of the things that I've learned, you know, a lot of people are just afraid in business in general, and it's kind of like um, business is a learning curve. It is a self-development there's no way that you can get started in business and not be a different person in a year and six months if you're actually putting things together and learning and trying to do bigger and better things. But the first thing people get into business is um, we're afraid of conversations with other people, but we're not afraid to work two or three jobs, um, give up all of our weekends, all of our holidays just to go work two or three jobs just to make ends meet. When you can start, um, like I did, I was working full-time as a nurse and I worked full-time until um, it was my, I was about four and a half years in when I completely uh, replaced my nursing income. And I was like, okay, I've had a job since I was 14, I can do this. The day that I replaced my income, it was such an eye opener for me that it was, I could see freedom. And for me, freedom means um, having my bills paid without a schedule from a boss, a supervisor, or somebody telling me that I have to work every other weekend, every other holiday, and oh, we forgot to schedule you off this holiday, so you get to schedule it, work the next two holidays. Um, yeah, I wanted out of that rat race because um, the, the thing that really flipped me over to push myself to the next level was when my son graduated from high school, he was uh, going to college for baseball. He was a baseball pitcher. That means he would only pitch one, maybe two days per week whenever they played. And I got a call on like a Tuesday or Wednesday. And he said, mom, I'm going to be pitching on Friday. Can you and dad be there? And I said, hands down, I am there. What time's the game? It was like one o'clock in the afternoon. So I went into my supervisor. We had nothing to do that Friday. There was no, um, no staff up there with me in the education department. And I said, hey, I'm gonna leave early because I've got an hour and a half drive to get to school. He's pitching today. And she goes, oh, you can't have the day off. And I'm like, what do you mean I can't have off? And I said, this is not something that I'm going to miss. It's a one and done. I never get to see his first again. And she's going, well, I've already got it scheduled off. I turned around, went straight downstairs to the next supervisor line and I got it approved and I left. But that did something to me as I was driving to his game. I'm like, she would have been okay 
for me to miss his first pitch off of a college mound. That's not okay for me. And it shouldn't be okay for you. So when people say that they're working two or three jobs, it's like, there's, there's other things you can do. It doesn't have to be network marketing, but what I do know is that network marketing is the uh, great equalizer. It averages uh, the average person, the average person for under $200 a month in most companies um, is your greatest chance to accumulate prosperity. And, you know, I don't know any other business that you can get started with a couple of hundred dollars and turn it into an enterprise and grow and be productive around the globe, literally around the globe. Um, I don't even, I need to go count to see how many countries I'm in. I'm in countries that I've even had to look at the globe to see where they were because I didn't even know. So, you know, massive upside potential for network marketing and very minimal downside risk. So, you know, it changed my life. And I know that's something that can also do for you. You know, people, generally, people fear what they don't understand. And, you know, they hate what they can't conquer. So, you know, after I've been in this industry for 10 years. And I have done so many different things to grow my business. But what I've never given up is my blog, AngelaBrook.com, my email list, which is on my blog, and having conversations with people that cost me no money at all to have conversations. I have bought leads. I have bought list of leads. I have run Facebook ads. I have built funnels. I have had really expensive funnels. Um, I've done Facebook lives, podcasts, emails, you name it. I've even put flyers out. Um, I quickly learned that putting, uh, postcards and business cards out in public in certain places is illegal. I stopped that immediately. Um, but I've learned the hard way. And you know, I, everybody wants to watch a lot of big trainers because they teach you how they built their business. And it may not be what you need to do. When I started building funnels, it didn't feel good to me. It was, I dreaded working on it. I did not enjoy working on it. And that was my red flag. And so when you have those red flags, why aren't you paying attention to them? Your business is about you. And all you have to do is what generates your energy. If it depletes you, that's not your thing. Um, there's a lot of business trainers out there. They're teaching lots of different things. Some people only teach funnels. Some people teach only blogging. Blogging takes time, consistency. It is a slow build. I've got over... A little over 700 posts and I don't know how many pages that are in there but everything that is me about my business is on AngelaBrook.com everything I've moved I've closed down every other outside system and put everything on my blog so that when you go there you get to know who I am you get to connect with me you can find my social media you can find my email list you can find um, the few funnels that I have that are free downloads. Everything is under one roof. That is my online real estate. And what I find people get confused and lost is when they're listening to way too many trainers at one time. And then they end up doing stuff that that person did to build, but it's not for you. So here's what you get to do in your business. Whatever that generates your energy, whatever accelerates you, if you start doing something and you don't feel focused or, you know, you're not listening to your gut and your intuition is going, eh, this is not for me, stop. Do what you enjoy doing. If it's only using social media and your email list, you notice I said, and your email list, uh, because your email list is something that you own. It is the only thing that you own. Your blog post, your blog on AngelaBrook.com, that's mine. Nobody can take that from me. If I'm using somebody else's system, they can shut that down. They can close, they can disappear. And then all of that work is gone. So I make sure I put everything under my roof so that I have control of that. Uh, Facebook Lives is something huge when, um, oh, I don't know when they came out. I guess they've, they've been out three, four, five years maybe. And everybody, the big rave was putting on Facebook lives and everybody was like you need to put on you need to start doing lives every day 
I'm doing a little white Angelica. Um, but everybody was like, you need to be doing Facebook lives every day. I did some, I didn't like it. I do them, I'm not afraid of it. Um, I can come up with content without any problem whatsoever because content is literally all around us, period. But it was just not something, you, know, you got to get up, you got to comb your hair, you got to put some kind of makeup on so you don't look like you're half dead. I know some people will get on there and they will do whatever they look like, they don't care. However, now that Clubhouse has come around, it's an audio, podcast is audio. And I love listening because when I'm sitting at the soccer game or the baseball game, I have always um, had my earbuds that I'm using for my podcast in my ears listening to something. And so Facebook lives are not something that I sit and watch on Facebook at all. If I watch a full Facebook live, it's rare, but I'm always listening to audio. And so audio is how I grew my business, driving back and forth to my job. Uh, podcasting and audio was just getting started, you know, back in the day when CDs would go into your CD-ROM. Well, as I was driving, I was listening to podcasts because I had 45 minutes to drive one way and 45 minutes home. I would sit on my break, put my earbuds in, and I would listen to some kind of audio on my break. So it just only made sense to me to do in my business what I absolutely love doing in my everyday life. And I've decided this year that I'm not doing anything that I don't enjoy. I've done the interview process where I interview people. I've built a summit. Of, um, I don't know, it was like 20, 25 people that I interviewed. It took me several weeks to get that done. And then I had to pay somebody to process it and put it into a funnel. I closed all of that. That's not what I enjoy doing. That is like busy work for me. Um, and it is irritant. So this is what this podcast is about, is what is what are you afraid of? Nothing. You don't have to be afraid of anything. Simply because you get to do your business on your terms, on your time scale, on your whatever. I don't have a day that I do a podcast. Every Tuesday I do a podcast. I don't do that. Um, I don't have a day that I go live in the Facebook group, Master the Rise. I jump in when I want to, when I feel like it, when I have a message to share. Um, and that's what I'm encouraging you. That was one thing that I wanted to get away from more than anything. And that was schedules. Somebody telling me when I had to do something. I can do a podcast sitting at the soccer game, sitting in my car. I can do that anywhere. And so my message to you is just to simply... Find out what it is that you love to do, because when we find the things that we truly love and enjoy, it's not an effort. It's fun. Um, I've learned to have conversations with people that are not business conversations. Number one, hey, how are you? What's going on? How's your business doing? Um, I saw on your profile that you went on such and such trip. Did you have a great trip? Take a lot of pictures. Anything. Ask questions. Just ask questions. You know, people fear what they don't understand and they hate what they can't conquer, but you can conquer what you love to do. You know, so stop being afraid of things and start craving what you enjoy, enjoy. You know, that's what we're supposed to do in our business is enjoy. It's not supposed to be another job. It's something that we enjoy. So allow yourself to have, you know, the healthy relationships, number one, with money. It is okay that you are abundant and that you have money that is rolling into your space. It is okay to receive money. A lot of people, which I am in a mindset class right now, and I'm loving it, is our biggest struggle for the average person is learning to receive the goodness that belongs to us. And um, we have traumas and things that happen in our life that kind of push us back from trusting that it's okay to receive. It's a little bit to work through but it's been so good, so good. Um, what else was I gonna say? At the very least, um, find, find that one thing. Don't care what the one thing is, whether it's a blog, whether it's a podcast, a Facebook Live, sending out email as find that one thing that you will do consistently because you enjoy writing or speaking or maybe 
take it, you know, go out for a picnic and uh, lay, lay on a, out in the sun and just take notes in your journal and discover who you are and what it is that you want to do. It's okay. But just start having conversations with people. Find out what it is they need. Everybody needs something. Trust me. They all need something. And they're looking for it. And you can either show up and be that person that's going to provide that for them. Or they're going to find somebody else that's going to be brave enough to, um, to share that with them. At the end of this po podcast, let me give you this link. AngelaBrook.com forward slash script with a little dash in between book script book that is going to give you a download on 17 copy and paste conversations that you can have every single day that I have used for the last 10 years of course tweak them into your words if you're sassier than me by all means add your sass to your conversation um, but just make sure that you're getting out there and that you're getting in front of people and letting them get to know you stories is super super powerful and and people are always in stories let them see your day yesterday my son was at a soccer tournament and I took people on my walk with me and the dog and you know I showed them the park um, then I showed them the soccer and I had conversations all day long sitting at the soccer field where's that at uh, the restaurant we ate at was beautiful and you know we had a uh, clear quartz um, clear quartz crystal chandelier and it was amazing. So I had to share that. So, you know, people just want to get to know you and the things that you, what you enjoy. And what that does is generates the me too factor. And there's nothing better than connecting with somebody that is a soccer mom, a baseball mom, a dog lover, um, somebody who loves to travel, or maybe somebody who just likes to eat at good restaurants. Where's that restaurant? I'm going to go there. Is it close to me? Share who you are. You don't have to build big fancy funnels. You don't have to get on Facebook Live ever if you do not enjoy Facebook Live. You don't have to do a podcast if you don't like speaking. Find your thing and do it consistently. Um, I hope that I get to meet you over on AngelaBrook.com. I hope to see you in the Master the Rise Facebook group so I can see your face and see your profile and get to know who you are. Um, grab the, the script book on AngelaBrook.com. It's the script, little dash book. So you can have conversation starters just to get you started and moving forward. So that is my rant for the day. And I am uh, grateful that you are here with me on number 60. Again, if you're not subscribed to the podcast, go to um, the Apple podcast and make sure you subscribe. Leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. And that is all I have today. Again, my name is Angela Brooks, and I wish you much grace and success.